Hey, sister friends, it's Terry from Sisterhood of the Traveling Brush. Welcome to my channel. I hope you stay a little while and make sure and subscribe and ring the bell and give me a comment. Let me know where you're watching from. I'm very excited today to present this uh, project to you. I'm making, or my, and my husband's helping me, a rustic picture frame for a family reunion that I'm actually on my way to right now. I'm in the parking lot of the library. But I was so excited whenever I saw the Miss Flips had created a Save the Planet eco-friendly challenge. And I don't know how much you know about me, but I'm a tradi traditional naturopathic doctor. And I owned a health food store for the last couple of decades that I lost to a hurricane a couple of years ago. But I live on a farm. We try to raise our own food. I try to... Um, not take medications and things like that if I can do a supplement or a food instead. And it's really important to me to, you know, preserve the planet and reuse and recycle as, as much as I can. So I want you to follow along with me on this trek. We go here uh, part of the time, my husband, my granddaughter are with me, and we go down to an old farm place. It's called the Seed Tick Farm that I inherited from my father and he inherited from his. And we harvest some barn wood and actually some window panes and some other things there and we have a few stumbling blocks along the way in fact i harvested some uh rope and some what do you call it barbed wire off of a fence and we use all of these to decorate the frame with at the end and i hope that you'll join me and i'll drive you along on my way here in louisiana you can see what the back roads look like here where i'm from and what the project looks like at the end so make sure and uh, check out the playlist in the comments and all of the other eco-friendly earth saving challenge joiners that we have here and i would love to hear what you think about the frame in the end thanks for watching Obviously the barn isn't um, structurally sound anymore, but it brings back a lot of memories for me. Whenever I was a kid, we had horses under here. I remember my cousin Shannon, I was about 10 years older than all of the other cousins, but the boys used to jump out of the loft at the top and he broke his leg worse than anybody I've ever seen break their leg. The bone was sticking out. He was in a whole body cast for a while but I love that the old horseshoe is still there. So we're going around now just trying to find a place where we can get some wood, but, you know, and harvest that, but not tear everything up yet. We're not ready to tear the barn down at this point. I found an old window here with some old window panes in it, and I decided to try to 
um, harvest some of those. I actually did get a couple of them to bring back with us because we were going to try to use that for the glass in the front of the frames. But, and I did get a couple of them, but it turns out that who would have thunk it, but it was plexiglass and it was too scratched up to use. Part of what's important when looking for the boards was uh, we needed them to be the same thickness so that the frame would be equal all the way around. So uh, Eric, my husband, scouted these out and, and they looked like they would be good. So I decided I wanted to be the one to pry it off. And I was able to get it off of there. And you can see a little bit here, but I'll show you some more in a minute. These actually ended up having a good bit of rot on the back, so we weren't able to use them for this project. After looking at the rot on the other boards, we decided to try some of the boards out of the loft. And so here I am kind of pulling one of those out of there. We got a couple from up there, the nails and things like that and stuff on them. But uh, they ended up being in better condition than the ones from the side. We knew we wanted to find some old barbed wire from a portion of the fence that was no longer being used to use as a decorative element on the front of the frame. So it's so grown up through there, but we were able to find an old piece and cut that out here. It was probably not a good idea to be going in here with short pants and flip-flops on, but it was also about 105 degrees. So here I'm using some little uh, nibblers, is what those are called, to cut off some of the uh, old barbed wire. The farm is just 10 acres located right in the middle of the Kisachi National Forest and here we are sort of driving through there. I thought you might enjoy a little bit of the back road scenery here in rural central Louisiana. This really is such a, a peaceful ride through here. The, my granddaughter, Jewel, rode in the back of the truck and actually was videoing this part over the cab of the truck. So hopefully we won't get dizzy from any of the riding here. But uh, coming up here shortly, we will also have, ooh, it is getting a little dizzy. We'll also have a couple of shots of the red cockaded woodpecker, 
preservation area. They are an endangered species, but they actually are killing our forest, if you want to know the truth. But they're, uh, they nest here, and so their trees are marked, they're painted with white paint around them of the ones that you're not allowed to get within so many yards of, and you're not, you know, the forestry people are not allowed to cut them down or anything like that, because they want to protect that habitat so that they can come back from extinction. This is the woodpecker area. The painted trees are the ones to stay away from. And if you look about halfway up, a part of the bark is missing and some of the sap is coming down. Those are the ones that they're nesting in. And there's the little signs. Those are, are everywhere through there. And a lot of the trees, you know, get damaged after so many woodpecker holes and they die and fall over. But this is also a wildlife management area. This is the first wood that we harvested. It was like a little uh, gate in part of the barn, but if you can look at, I'm pointing out a difference here in the width. That's about an inch and a half on the top board and maybe three quarters of an inch on the other one. Then here are the two large boards that have all the rot on them. That's what we intended on using. I'm gonna try to get up close here and show you some of that. This is where um, termites and things have been in there and really kind of damaged the wood, so that wasn't usable for us at this point either. I do love the way that the gate piece looks, especially with the different colors of paint and things on the outside of it, and we definitely will use it on a different project. But here you can see the two boards that we got off of the top and the windows that I got there. Uh, these are out of the loft, so I'm gonna need to clean these up and get them ready. And there are some worm holes and some termite holes and things in these, but they're not rotten and they are in good enough condition. So we need to take the nails out, clean them off, and get them ready to use. The first thing I did was use an old scrub brush and scrub any of the embedded dirt and things off of, you know, both sides, both boards, both sides, top and bottom. There was a lot on there, especially on the other side. And then after that, because this is my arm with the torn rotator cuff, um, I wasn't able to do this as aggressively as I wanted to. So we came back afterwards and I sprayed it off with air from the air compressor as well to make sure that we had a you know, a good clean surface to work with. And I'm holding my breath here, trying not to breathe up this 100 year old dust. surprised just how much dust was still on here after I had already brushed it. I just tapped on the, the tip of the nails and popped them back out through the other side with the hammer.
here. Eric's going to operate the uh, table saw for us because I'm not proficient at that and you got to really be careful with it. But we wanted to rip these boards down to two and a half inches wide because we're that's the width we're going to use for the frames themselves. So we start with the straightest edge down the side there and split this one into a two and a half inch piece and then flipped it over and cut it straight, get, got ourselves another straight edge and cut the other side into a two and a half inch piece. boards are cut and ready but I wanted to show you this they were very uh, wormy sort of termite through there it's still strong enough to use for the frame there's no active termites in it right now it is old damage but um, there was a little bit of that which I think just gave it more character and it's it's just fun to still use Here we're using the compound miter saw. We're gonna cut two 13 inch pieces and two 15 inch pieces. We're actually cutting four of each because we're making two frames at a time here. But we start out with a 45 degree angle and we're measuring for the, the 13 inches is the inside, the smaller piece. So we also come back, you'll probably see here in a minute, and cut it back from the other direction, but we don't waste those pieces. We're gonna come back and use those again as part of the decorative element for the front. What he's screwing in right here is called a cheater or a stop, and that's a board when we're doing, uh, cutting multiple pieces into the same length. You can cut that off sort of like a jig that would be down at the end. You screw it right into your workbench piece there and that's where you can hurry up and put your next board up there and it's going to stop exactly where it's supposed to so you can just make your next cut. It's a great time saver. Now we have our 13 inch pieces cut with a spare and we're going to cut the 15 inch pieces. Of course your measurements may or may not be the same. What 
you're going to cut based on what wood you find or you're able to harvest what size frame you're wanting to make but i am gonna i am writing all this down and gonna give you a, a screenshot or a shot in a minute of the uh, exact measurements we used for the frame that we built in case you want to you know use those dimensions for anything what you see here is a piece of Luan on top of the blue part, which is some plexiglass. And those are both harvested from projects that we did at uh, my store after the hurricane. And what he's done is measured the thickness of that and then uh, lowering the blade on the table saw to match that. And he's cutting a groove called a dado through there that both of those pieces will fit into to come up flush in the end so that they sort of fit all together like a puzzle piece. He cut all the inner pieces, the all four of the inner pieces to uh, the exact same depth so that that would fit in there. It's important at this point to decide which side of your wood looks the same as the other pieces and what you want to be your front and what you want to be your back so that it can be consistent because some of the pieces it may be darker on back than the front. So you do wanna make sure that all of those are looking the same and it's gonna have the dado on the side that's coming up. After the dados are done, you want to match up your pieces to make sure that they sort of butt up to be exactly the same size and one's not thicker than the other or longer than the other or any kind of crazy way. All of these matched up really well, uh, so that worked out great. And then we're going to use the tight bond, my favorite wood glue, to um, glue the ends of this before we use the corrugated fastener to attach them to each other and that holds them together until the glue sticks good and then it becomes a good solid piece. We're going to use a corrugated fastener because that's you know what we have available but you can screw this together you can use you know any kind of nail or whatever that you have that can attach it you don't have to go buy any kind of special tool for this or anything we just happen to have this one. Also used um, Q-tips or cotton swabs to apply the glue here because I just didn't want to get the ends of my fingers sticky, but that became a little bit of a mess as the, I don't know if it was because they were the cheap ones or what, but the cotton wanted to come off of there and it was a little yuckier in uh, applying the glue than it kind of needed to be. making sure not to get any of the glue on the part that's going to be the face or the front part of it because it can leave a little bit of a shiny area later if you do.
most important part here before you start attaching those is to make sure that the dado on the inside is level and even because that's where your uh, plexiglass and your Luan or cardboard, whatever it is that you're going to put in there for your backing is going to sit. So you want that to be even. We just uh, sat the Luan on back and made the little mark for cutting it to go ahead and cut it to width and Eric did that on the table saw. Now we're going to put it back on there and measure for the length and then cut that on the uh, compound miter saw. Woohoo! Perfect fit! Now since the Luan backing and the plexiglass are going to both be the same exact size, he just used the uh, Luan as a guide for cutting the uh, plexiglass. You can cut plexiglass on the compound miter saw, but you can't cut real glass on there. And after you cut it, you just peel the blue adhesive liner off of there and that just sort of protects it as it's laying around the workshop and all that. another perfect fit and then once both pieces are in there it does sit flush so that's exactly what we wanted it to do this is a similar frame that we made before and what, what we're about to cut now are the little triangles that hold the luon in place the backing in place we had uh, used a brad nailer to nail it in on this one, but because this one is going to the family reunion and they're gonna put their own picture in it afterward, um, we're gonna use screws on this one to screw it down. So we put them all together and screwed pilot holes and then made sure that the screws were not too long, that they wouldn't go all the way through and we just used screws that we had. So here we're getting those four corners ready and gonna hold the back on with that. We made this one for one of those old Tommy pictures that me and the my daughters and some of my grandkids took in Branson a couple of years ago. For the outer decorative part of the frame and the part that makes it, you know, be able to stand up or sit up on your countertop or be hung, um, we wanted that to be a little bit bigger. So we went, um, we cut two at 13 and an eighth inches. And then for the bottom piece, we cut that at 17 and five sixteenths. And we wanted the top about an inch longer on each side. So we did that one at uh, 19 and five sixteenths. We cut off a little bit of the piece of the end here um, so that we would have a straight edge at the end and then did our measurements. Here we used a brad nailer to nail these in because it's so tiny and doesn't really have a head. But then again, you can still use nails or screws or whatever you have.
Here we have those corners that we cut off when we did the mitered edges earlier, and we're just marking them all the width of the board there so they'll be the correct thickness, and we're going to attach those to the front as a decorative element. We used a bandsaw for this, but you could use a jigsaw or a circular saw or just whatever you have to cut these. They're a perfect fit. We just put them right in the corners and use the little brad nailer. Again, just use whatever you have and attach them right in. We just used some scrap rope that we had, so any top or any size of rope that you have will work, or you can use this part or not use this part. The last decorative element is the barbed wire and we like to put just a little strip of that along each side and we just use the nippers to kind of cut it to size. The last thing is going to be putting something to hang it with on back. You can see we have the little corners screwed on there now so that whoever gets this can take those off to be able to put their picture in. And he just came down, I think it was like five and a quarter inches or something like that, to uh, put the first eye hook in. These are just some that we found that weren't too long. And there's a little tip that we have here. You know how hard they sometimes are to screw on you can get a nail and slip it through the eye of the eye hook and just twirl it around and it makes life so much easier. <laughs> then we measured exactly down to the center of that eye hook to make sure that we put the one on the other side in the same place so that it would hang evenly and then just did the same thing on that side. Now we needed a hanging wire and you can use whatever you want to for this. We used some extra electrical wire we just had and stripped the outer part off, but you could use rope or string or, you know, regular picture hanging wire, whatever you have. We're just using what we had and this works perfectly. You just put it through the eye hook and bring it around. And then the most important part here is making sure that whenever it's fully outstretched, it'll still be below the top of the frame. And then we cut off the ex excess, twisted it around and boom, it was done. I printed off a paper for the inside, a graphic about the family reunion that I was bringing it to as a door prize. And then, you know, a note, of course, for them to put their photo there. But I think that whoever gets it's going to be glad to have it. These are all the measurements that we used in case you want to make yours the same size. But, you know, whatever size scraps that you have, that'll indicate and dictate, you know, what size yours will be.
thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed that. And if you build your own frame, make sure and send me a picture of it. I would love to see it. Check out the playlist down below. And thanks so much to the Miss Flips for sponsoring this challenge. I really enjoyed it. Make sure to subscribe.